Um, what was going to say to you? Oh, it's, it seems to be just everybody's got an agenda. That's what it seems like. It's there is it's not news. It's not really news. I start to try and read for a second and I go, okay, they're trying to convince me of something. So I go on to the next one and then mm -hmm. I go on to Fox News and they're trying to convince me of something that's not quite one way, still hedging their bets the other way. And, right. and then Russia Today is always predictable in the sense that they always Ru try to. Russia Today? Yeah, Russia, that's RT.com, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you can, yeah. I checked that out just to see, just to yeah, see, sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. see what the, and, and theirs is always kind of a, it's funny, their narrative is always just to, to leave the foot in. It's like, you know, talking about somebody pretending to, that you're being complimentary and saying, God, they're, those clothes they wear, they're lovely. Like, but what's the story about the state of their clothes? You know what I mean? <laughs> or, or some sort of, or, or they go on a little bit. They're just, they're a little bit boring. But they're lovely, don't get me wrong now. And then BBC will be, BBC will have another narrative and The Guardian is definitely left and they're always, that Trump is evil and and it's all, it's everybody's just telling their own story, version of events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's and so what do you what what do you look at like? What would you where do you get your news? Um usually yeah, it's it's a, it's similar except for the, the 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 Russia today or whatever that was that you mentioned. Um but usually yeah. CNN or um um sometimes I'll I'll go on I'll go usually it goes CNN, Yahoo, Fox, and then <laughs> Uh, sometimes I'll, uh, if I've got a little little bit of time, I'll do BBC as well. Okay. So, but I don't. I, I, it's uh, it's without a, a shred of belief in any of it. Yeah. So, it's just, uh, yeah, it just seems to be a lot more kind of going on. And it's interesting now that the the you know that now that uh, Trump doesn't have any way of putting out anything. It's interesting not to hear anything from him. So that's that's. Good. But that's an interesting. It's an interesting world where, you see, you might have to patterns, and it's like you know picking at a scab almost. You might go and have a look. See what's he saying today, just to wind yourself up, or yeah. or go okay, yeah, or whatever. And but I, I'd go and just have a look to see. And now he's not there. So he's, he has been silenced. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, that, that question that was arising, which is what are we going to, what are we going to do about him? What, what's going to happen to him? How, you know, because of what, what they're bringing up, the impeachment and the 25th Amendment and stuff, is basically who's going to, who has eyes on him? Who's going to corral him? Who's going to just keep him for the next whatever many days it is silenced and off, you know, and, and, and just, to not make any more trouble or whatever it is. And it seems like to, together, many people have found a way to kind of do that. Yeah. And I, and I don't know, I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm happy not to hear from him, but, but I'm not, I don't know how, you know, the of silencing people. That's, that's the other whole other thing, which I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about all of that. Yeah, we, it is. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, it's good to see you, man. Um, just it's from, good to see you. you. <laughs> my, I just realized. I just realized my wife's name is up here. On my, yeah, <laughs> Carrie. I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm going to just replace it with Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured it was you. I don't. I yeah. don't set up many. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I am able to switch back and forth between my wife and me very, very uh, believably. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so from an Irish perspective, you look mm. on and, you know, when this, so when, um, say, I kind of get, I, I was saying to people before Trump got in, I, I mm. said to people, I, I think he's going to get in. And everybody I said to, they thought, oh, no, there's no chance, no chance. And it was it was the manner in which he pres I didn't believe a word he said, but he seemed to kind of get marketing. So that's a, that was his thing. So he's right, right. He was like a schoolyard bully. He was able to repeat yeah. himself and he'd give people names and all of that kind of 
he got in and then it was a relentless negativity about him. And almost like it's okay for the whole world to go and bully this guy. The whole world to laugh at him. And uh, I kind of just went, well, okay, the narrative is continuously, just over the, the last few years, I wondered, well, why is it always? Is it because they're afraid that he'll lose the plot? That is he afraid that he'll just, or, or I couldn't understand why it was continuously, they never got bored in four years. Four years, he has been the headline of the world. Uh, CNN for four years, he's been the front cover uh, and I find, uh, what, what is, what's, is that not just insane? Is it not yeah. insane? Like this thing that we're in, this world we're in, and this guy, I mean, it's not just once a week, every day, every day for multiple four times, years. Yeah. yeah, multiple times a day, constantly. He, he farts and Trump has farted. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I don't know. You could say in a way that's good training. He got good training. To be able to do that on a whole worldwide stage for four years, I mean, that's, that's incredible. I mean, he, he, everything led up to him doing that type of thing from, you know, everything, childhood, all of this stuff, the stories that he created, believed about himself, you know, that other, you know, that other people believed and all of that stuff. It all just kind of came together for these last, for this last run, which was, you know, People might say, you know, devastating for our country, but uh, I don't know. Is it, yeah, that's what I wonder. You see, it seems is it devastating? Like it is, is it devastating? It's like, you yeah. know, you know uh, I remember when Barack got in and it was kind of mm. like, you know, Bush was apparently the worst president, couldn't string decent sentences together. His, you know, he relied totally on repeating stuff as opposed to right. being able to speak with any right. kind of naturalness. And then when he, uh, Barack got in, it was like, oh, I remember actually I was on a, on a trip to New York and I remember um, booking it in with the hotel and it was on the day and I said, whoever I was talking to, I said, that's congratulations, it's great news, you must all be so relieved because it was like the whole world for a day or two breathed this sigh of relief, Bush is gone, somebody apparently reasonable and presentable is in. And she then, didn't matter like it was just <laughs> the same old same old yeah oh. yeah yeah I don't know it's um, a, a friend of mine today was talking about he's an improviser and he said you know we had a show scheduled to do on the 20th and I went oh and he said but we're not doing it now because we realized the 20th there's a lot of stuff going on and it was it would be tone deaf to do an improvisation show and I thought you know well maybe but but it's certainly, you know, and I said, you know, it's, for, for many people in the country, at least over half the people in the country, the 20th is uh, ostensibly uh, a, a day to kind of celebrate something or to have some sort of uh, relief or some sort of that, you know, your guy got in or whatever it is. And it's, and it's not feeling that way at all leading up to it. It feels like, my God, what's going to happen on, you know, the tw or leading up to the 20th and on the 20th. And like, he's, so I don't know what's going to happen, but, I, but, but people are just very careful right now. Yeah, there is that in the air. Is there like of saying the wrong thing uh, of across the board and I mean this is maybe it's reaching the crescendo of see I don't know I don't have the sense is with the is what you're saying is there a potential for war civil war is, is that the kind of thing you're talking about there or are you just yeah you just on, lot, on that note I mean I mean I mean I think a lot of people think that that's uh could be possible I mean maybe maybe there's people in this country who want that to be possible um it seems like our country is set up for that, or is, is that seems to be this, you know, how the story can seem to be going. But as you know, there's any possibility of anything happening. Because it's, yeah. And so I don't know what it looks like. I know that at certain points, I'll feel myself getting 
contracted over something and there'll be fear that arises and there's, you know, uh, and there's just something, images start arising about, oh, what could this turn into and da 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 da. And then it just, you know, then it just kind of dies down. But uh, so I don't, I don't quite know. I mean, there's people, everyone's, I mean, everyone I know is stressed. So we yeah. have a, kind of a stress filled, you know, country right now. Um, so that's what but, that's that's just what I know. But there is a bit of that though everywhere, if whether it's about the wearing masks or not wearing masks yeah, and yeah, lockdown yeah. versus lockdown and, yeah. and everything is this new sort of um first of all, it's oh, oh, do will I say the wrong thing now? If I if I really let go here and really just go blah 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 blah, is that is that a wrong thing to say now? Would that ignite, would that end up in an argument? Because everything seems to be fucking this, uh, it, like it's Trump and Biden, left and right, you know, lockdown, not lockdown, mass, no mass. And they're all kind of into the one, I can't be wrong, mm. you know. So then everything becomes that in every scenario. Then if you end up talking to somebody, you kind of go, all right, but they don't, they're pro-lockdown. So they really don't want to hear any other suggestion then. Or somebody's pro this way, they don't want to see that this. Well, maybe both are wrong. Maybe Trump's a dickhead and Biden's a dickhead. Maybe everybody's a dickhead. Let me start from there. Maybe nobody has a clue. Maybe. And, may, and if everybody just went, you know what, now, I actually, I really I have no idea. I'm going to go home and sleep on it. I'll come back to you tomorrow. I have no idea what to do about this. Everybody has yeah. to appear so certain and so right. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I think, you know, I mean, I, I find myself, uh, uh, you know, uh, definitely there's contrary actions that are happening to what I, what I imagine I believe in. I, there's contrary actions that occur on my, on this part. So, uh, which doesn't negate what is going on in the world in terms of like, you know, the virus or whatever like that. But I don't know, for, for whatever reason, it, it feels like there's that the tension between freedom and, and just putting freedom <laughs> and putting freedom off for a while until we get something. It's almost yeah. the same thing that is, you know, is, it doesn't, it, it's really, it's hands thrown up in the air. It seems so, um, it seems so random what's going on in terms of who's, I mean, I have friends, I don't know if you do, I have friends who one person was infected and the rest of the household didn't get it, or there were 40 people at a wedding, and 20 people got it and 20 people didn't get it, and or there was, you know, whatever. And I've, we go in and out of places to go shopping and you know that there's people that have it in where you're shopping and we don't get it, but other people, so I don't, I have no clue. I think we're just, just, we're, you know, as a family, as you know, and I know your father, and you've got two girls and um, wife, and you know, and, uh, we definitely find ourselves taking the all the precautions, but we do the best we can. Well, you know, we had it back in March myself. Oh, you did. And, yeah, I went skiing in Austria, and so I brought it back um, uh -huh. into the household, and um, so How was we were. That? Six weeks, I was sick. Um, you see, it's very different being um, sick and then being sick and to have a surround sound of this is a worldwide pandemic. You're going to, you could risk dying. It's five out of 100 people. Mm -hmm. That's where the facts were back then. And um, you're not allowed to leave your house. You're not allowed to go shopping and uh, all of those things. Things. So, in other words, if I had just uh, felt really, really sick and there was no nothing going on, how would I have been? Well, I probably would have just gone to the shop anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I could have. I, it was, I was exhausted by even walking up the stairs. Um, it, it was, but it, you see, it was so hard to differentiate between just being, like I had pneumonia maybe 10 or six years ago. And so I was in a hospital. I was up to a ventilator. So that, in my oh, mind, wow. that was, or not a ventilator, my, my, I'm such a fucking man, drama. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I keep saying that to my wife. I was saying, I was on a ventilator. She goes, no, 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 you weren't on a ventilator. You had a bit of oxygen. 
to, or you'd bid it whatever and I'd go okay yes. <laughs> and, then, and then I'd say it, I'd say it again the next time <laughs> but um, what and, the, and, your, and your entire family uh, had it when Nula got it and we were told oh. by the doctor to keep ourselves apart from the kids and I thought no no I'm not doing that mm -hmm. I think if the kids if it's uh, either they're not telling us something or I think it's better that the kids get exposed to this. That was my instinct at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I just thought, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we were, I mean, it was, we were, I was in a bad way, you know, for two of the weeks it was bad. We were bed bound. Mm -hmm. and, um, but so maybe that has changed, but I was very much of the opinion that this is, um, this is dangerous. This is, you know, the stats are that, you know, it's a hundred cases and five deaths. Right. That, that's what the maths at the time. And I remember thinking this is bad, but then I got better and the facts kind of, or the figures seem to be more apparent that, you know, mortality was way, way less than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and I don't like fear. Even when I was sick, I, I didn't like the idea of being confined to a high house. It didn't make sense. Right. Uh, why? So I still now I just feel, well, you see, I think you're either, either kind of a certain way or not. I, still, I do. I think you, innovation and courage would lead to an off, would lead to way better solutions. And that's the only discussion I'd like to have, you know, not, not, not now necessarily, but that's the only thing I'd be passionate about. Right, but, uh, right. You know, the feeling that there are innovative ways to do things. It's not just yeah. wait. But you're cautious. You feel cautious about it now. Well, you know, I mean, we, we've had our own sort of thing that happened during the pandemic is that, you know, we uh, we had water damage in our house and we went on. We were vagabonds for five months. So during the entire time we were uh, we moved to seven different places in. Oh, wow. in in five months. We just got back into our home right before Christmas. Uh, but we've had to come in and out of our home being around a lot of different workers. So it was like, it, it was it, it was ridiculous. We were in contact with so many more people than I, I think I would have ever wanted to have been in contact with. And, yeah. um, you know, because we had to make decisions and we had to, you know, so all of this stuff. And so we got a lot of tests and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say that I'm in any way, because I think somehow, you know, there's something about worry and fear, like you said, is it? it's, I don't think it's in any way has, is helpful to this because it just adds to the stress. I think early on, before we knew things, I was on people going, did you wash your hands? Did you make sure that you, did you, you know, and, uh, but now it's it's just you know everyone seems to be we're just taking the precautions we can take living our lives and uh, and so far you know we haven't our family hasn't gotten it so and we've been far far less careful than other families that have gotten it so yeah who knows anyway yeah who knows yeah what does this, the, say, about, the, what does this say about art. <laughs> well, let's see. Don't, don't think I, I don't think I was going to say to you in the email. I was going to. I, I was I, as a total. The only thing I kind of wanted to say to you was: Have you heard of ivermectin? Who is it? Have you heard of ivermectin? It's a, it's um, a substance. No, ivermectin. So, that, I, so I might How do you send spell it. That? How do you spell that? So it's I V E R. Uh huh. M E C T I N. Okay, so it's a, so I, I the reason I wanted to send it on to you and it's more in the line of um, preventative measures, and this mm -hmm. isn't so. There's a doctor who uh, went up in front of the Senate. So this is what's interesting is that you don't get to see this in the oh. U.S. So oh. the doctor goes up in front of the Senate and he's impassioned, and he said he has eleven trials of giving this substance to people. Um, proactively and the results are a miracle and i'll send it on to you it's on vimeo because it's not, you can't even get it on youtube now okay. my brain it, my brain just goes to um well all i'm going to do is share it to a few people who are open to it i'm not even going to bother because i feel like there's such negativity 
But this doctor, you see him, you can get his authenticity. There's nothing to gain for him because this is this drug has been around. It's an over the or it's it's you have to have a prescription to get it. But mm. the results are phenomenal. There's already some WHO um preliminary research on it that are saying yes this looks good they're just about admitting it but it's it's really really slow and you have this doctor going why aren't we talking about this why 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 are we not talking about something that can as a preventative and if you get it so i'd only be saying it for if you're worried or if you have anybody you know who's kind of vulnerable i'd be saying well this is apparently a wonder sort of a drug it mm. is, you know, all the years of it been used for multiple different reasons, it has caused zero harm. And this guy is saying, and the results are phenomenal. And all he's asking is, can you look into it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to send it add on to you just. Oh yeah, a, please do. And what was it? What was it used for initially? Do you, uh... I think it's something to do with parasites and uh -huh. um, um, in animals is where it started off. And then they brought it in to humans in Africa. Mm. So, for example, if you look at Mexico, are ha handing out packs. And then I think in some parts of India, they're handing out packs with ivermectin and a couple of other things. Oh, but, wow. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I have a friend in New York who's uh, gave it to his mom. I've actually, I, I got it from this guy in India. But it, uh, it sounds like I'm, I'm only suggesting that you have a look at it. Because I looked at it and I kind of went, well, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting, is it not? Why, why, if it is really a pandemic and a crisis, why wouldn't people go, oh, here's something that's very positive. And we should all look into this a little bit more. Like if it is, you know, if you're in a time of, say, let's say it's really this, if you look at the headlines and it's fear everywhere, well, then surely you would take measures to counter any possibility of um, of dying. So I just, I, that's what I kind of find it. Well, why is it not? Is it because it's crap? Is it because mm. it's, it's not good? Okay. But then you have a doctor who's representing, I, I think if you see, I'd be curious to see what you think of this guy, because okay. it's just another, you're another view on it. I look at it and go, right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to check this out. And then I found more about it and research from five years ago. It's actually got a prize for being a really good drug. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. Uh, I think, you know, another thing that in, in, um, I, I think that so much happened, um, this, this in 2020, I mean, you know, with Trump and some other people touting drugs that were going to be, and, you know, they ended up going, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. And, and it, it, it didn't hold any water. Um, so I think that there's, there's a... The problem a, is he said it, that hydroxychloroquine is interesting. It, it could be yeah. interesting. He, he said it though. So mm -hmm. it's... Exactly. So it's like you you know, kind of push, push it aside because of your feelings about, about him and about his, about his, the way that he plays with the truth. Yeah. So, you know, so, you know, if you cry wolf and wolf and wolf, and then all of a sudden there's, you know, then the wolf is there, you go, oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it and it really is that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and you have to, in a way, you have to, um, I did it as a, like my mum, um, 78, mm -hmm. and I, she's uh, headed off to Spain for a month um, on the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like, I kind of like that <laughs> she's, um, she's just doing it anyway, even though she's yeah, yeah. really afraid, like she's really afraid, but she'd still do mm -hmm. go away anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is she taking this? Did you get? Did you see yeah, it? I've got it. I uh, got it to her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So she's got. She's, she's nothing to lose, and she'd be a little bit open anyway to that sort of thing. So uh -huh. she's going to take it. Oh, but she's cute. very, she's very healthy. Like she's into yoga and uh, uh -huh. eating very, very well and all that sort of thing. So. Oh wow! Was that? Has she always been that way? Was she that way when you were growing growing up? Was she? Yeah, like, she's been like kind of that for a while. Uh -huh. it may be yeah in her later years she's still mm. uh, as I was saying to somebody she's still good and Catholic at the same time despite uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> despite all that it's too ingrained all that yeah. too, too okay. safe 
Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's yeah. we've got the news of the day. Out we of got the it. Way. We did it. <laughs> we solved it all, I think, really for you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got that down. Yeah, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens here. And uh, I wanted to. Uh, uh, where are you at in in Ireland, by the way? Dublin. Uh, you're where? In Dublin, in this, in, in the capital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah we uh, and that's uh, and and is and that's where you met Joe. Was was there Joe Rooney? Um, yeah, that is, I, how did I, this is way back, I, um, I think I just sent a message and said, did he fancy a podcast? So I did a podcast with him mm-hmm. and then we were, I think we thought about doing some sketches, or, you know, filming some ideas for sketches. And then what we decided to do was film us chatting about doing videos and sketches. Right, right, right. And then that what? evolved into doing a run the marathon. Oh yeah, that's great. How long did you train for that? Maybe January to April. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did it a second time with um, together. Yeah. Um, but how do he you know, was, Joe? Yeah. He was. Uh, we did a production of the Shawshank Redemption. Oh wow! And that's my favorite. Took, that's my favorite movie, right? And so, and we took that up to the Edinburgh Festival, and um, and he, uh, so he was cast in that, and I came over from the states, and and uh, we rehearsed in London, and went up there. But I have such incredible memories of Joe. What an amazing! And he came. He when he came over here. I took him on a tour of Hollywood and showed him all the sites in LA and stuff. And, you know, went, so he was, he came over with sort of an Irish comedy show with he and a couple of other com- uh, uh, comedians, standups. And, um, but he was a part of something like that, that it, it, it was uh, in, in, in lieu of our conversations about how the, how things don't, there's not a beginning and an ending to things. Uh, he was a part of a thing that occurred one night uh, in a performance uh, where I went off stage and, uh, and I walked off stage and I looked at everything and I went, oh, that was a pretty good show. And I went back into the dressing room and sat there getting ready to do the uh, curtain call. <laughs> and I had left with still an act to go. And he had, everyone was running around. They couldn't find me. And they thought my, I might've died someplace. I might've, because I was like, you know, I was, I was the, you know, Mr. Always, you know, always on time, always like I never. And I just, I just, I had a, a time bloop. It just a fart, time fart just went. And I was, I had done the show. And that was not what was happening. And as I recall, at at certain point, Joe came crashing into the upstairs room and said, Kyle, the show's still going on. (laughs) And I went, what? And the reason I say this is because from what you and I were talking about, you know, you were saying, you know, you're, you're sitting there and then you start writing a poem and then you put down your pen and then life is continues to go on. And that to me was like, Oh, well, that was a part of the, that was the performance for that night was this. And they even started shuffling the audience out of the thing because the show was over because they couldn't find an actor. (laughs) And then when I finally made it back on 800 people started streaming back into the theater during this performance. And when I, as Kyle at that time, looked at it, I went, what an asshole you are. What's going on? Your memory's going, there's something wrong. Why, how could you have ever done something like that? But upon reflecting on like what you and I had spoke about, that was just a part of the whole performance. That was, that was a part of the entire thing. It wasn't, there wasn't a, 
um, you know, because other actors will say to me, oh, you know what, I had that experience. I did that once and I went, really? And I thought, man, more actors than I've ever heard about have had experiences where they just, they didn't show up on stage. They just, and I thought, wow, what an interesting thing. And it seems to me that that's what we've been, you know, speaking about in terms of, um, you know, our emails about art. And how does any, how does this all relate to what is, what, what, what is the, what's the creative um, spirit or whatever it is as a, you know, because what I, what, what I've started to find is that I've started to have less interest in it. It's still going on. I'll still have ideas and I'll still write ideas down or I'll still pick up something and imagine myself acting in something or I'll still watch. There's still that, those things that are happening. But, but in terms of the interest in, in a motor cranking up and producing stuff, that's like, feels like it's almost completely gone. And, and on one part, that sucks. <laughs> that feel, that feels like oh my god what that's that's been my life and i know you've spoken about this before as well is that so so but but the understanding of how something like that happened that one night and that i that i started looking at that is that that was just like a a dark mark on my career <laughs> yeah. Is that happening rather than that's just the way that's just, that's it as well. Yeah. That's not separate from any of it. And um, anyway, I just, I just wanted to no, share. It's very, yeah. But it's really, there's a few things um, came up there when you were, um, uh. first one is kind of in a way when you, when the actor isn't there, and the role isn't being played anymore. The show is over. <laughs> you know the symbology of that. When the when the role of being being somebody isn't played anymore, then what? There's nothing to say. And yet mm -hmm. somehow words still happen, and everything still seems to carry on. But the show is over. Everybody you might as well go home because there's nothing to get here anymore. Yeah. Now, I know that's not exact, but there, that's what came up. That is that kind of symbology of of the role and the actors and, you know, playing a role in either life or on stage. <laughs> and then so if there was a perfect person in control of anything, then everything uh -huh. would be absolutely immaculate. You know, everything yeah. would be perfectly aligned and in order. And there would be, you know, everything would be regimented. There'd be no idea of a mistake. There'd be no sadness. There'd never be rage. It would be, you know, it is that kind of like extreme, rigid, control, 1984 view of the world where nothing bad would happen. And, mm -hmm. then, and the, you see, in the world of things happening and places and, 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 and a thing called a show, uh, that, then, there, then there is a person that can turn up to the show and do the show and do it perfectly and do a great performance. But in the play of, of this fucking thing, there isn't any control it appears like there's brakes and the steering wheel and we know what we're doing and then for it to suddenly boom and for that unfolding to be the show is over because that is a kind of reflection of of this what 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 is happening in the end there isn't anybody who knows what's happening it just appears like there's real human beings talking about what they know and obviously then there's a it can be a closed in view in this performance of somebody who knows the world and knows that how things are, but that's also an unfolding. And in a way you got a real, the fact that the show was over, felt like it was over, the show was done, even though it was apparently still going on as a reflection of, <laughs> there is no one like. Yeah. And they, there's nothing to compare this to either. And, yeah. and in a way, I mean, I, like I would have been always in, in fascinated by the creative art and the arts and how you how, what is brilliant inspiration, what's copying, what's originality, what's authentic, and um, and then also then without 
it's all of that. It's all that. So fucking up on stage is mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is this. It's only the the person that really holds on to the idea of an image of what a great performance is like or what life is supposed to be like or sure yeah yeah you know i'm thinking of this you know what you know something that we've you know that i i something that has is clear to me from doing you know from performing and such and and you know and the great thing about having children that are interested in this and who have also been on stage or done things like that is that is to be able to say to them you've got your lines and you've got your place but if you mess up just keep going because the audience doesn't know you're messing up or whatever is called a mess up it's just a piece it's almost like just a piece of grace it just sparks the next whatever happens you know the the thing about what was going on it, it's so it's like very strangely i'll just use these terms like symbolic like there's the backstage right there's the backstage there's the stage manager there's the people running around there's like i was up at, sitting in that room very calm very calm there was no sense that i had like not come back on stage or anything i was just very calm once Joe came in, I believe it was Joe came in, all of a sudden, it, everything was in action, had to put different clothes on, was coming downstairs, I was like, I'm actually crying because I, I'd never done this before. The stage, <laughs> the stage manager is back there saying, we are closing down the show, we can't go on, we, uh, and, and, and other actors going, wait a minute, we can't. Two actors went out on stage, these hilarious guys, and started improvising, wait until I could get back on stage. I had been, I had, they had, I had been lost for about 10 to 15 minutes. It wasn't just a two minute period of time, it was 10 to 15 minutes. And, and, but when I got out there, it, you just went boom, right back into it. The audience came in, they, they seemed to think maybe there was a lighting difficulty, difficulty in the lighting. So there was all of these stories that were going on in that theater mm-hmm. about what had happened. And none of them were true. Yeah. <laughs> none of them were true, <laughs> which is the, this is the, this is the, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Just... It's so, it's so wonderful to, to, to say uh, for you, to, well, nothing happened. I thought it was over. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. go, what? Yeah. Oh, give us something else. Give us something else, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I can't tell you. <laughs> um, yeah. I can ask you, how did, um, in the way you talk, it seems like you were into, and obviously we've to- uh, um, talked in the few emails, but mm. how did you get into this, this, uh, this, this thing we're talking about as well, this, what is this, non-duality? Or, you know, did, there's obviously yeah. in the talk about you uh, it seems like it, there's an interest there or there's something happened I think it was it was it was actually just maybe um, a couple years before that happened um, and um, I mean I think I'd, uh, I'd all I, I had for many years been seeking without knowing I was seeking and, or, and meditating and stuff like that but I it's funny, I don't think I ever thought of it as seeking it because I was just doing it. And then uh, my mother and my father died right two years prior to this, this happening. And during that time, I had um, a, a, a fellow by the name of uh, Paul Hederman, who's the guy. Paul, the, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and he's also a, a sobriety guy and I had been sober for a few years. And so it, he, he spoke kind of both languages in a way, uh, which kind of really, so that, that's the first time that I think that I started to, you know, get that particular message. And, um, and uh, I had, I'd always been, um, I'd, I had done a lot of um, sitting uh, Zen, Zazen, and uh, so had a fairly strong sitting practice, but didn't like authority <laughs> mm. <laughs> and didn't buy the group thing. I didn't buy that, and I didn't, uh, I, I, I liked just sitting. 
I just like sitting. Um, so I, I, I found myself kind of always getting involved with the, uh, some, and then just ending up leaving. Um, because I didn't, because it was something also that felt, so in answer to your question, I could go down any number of stories there. In answer yeah. to questions, probably been about uh, seven years or so. Um, but then Paul ended up becoming a, a pretty good friend. Um, and, uh, and so I spent some time with him and that was, uh, that, that seemed to clarify some things in my life. And, um, and then, uh, you know, and then, um, and then the, during this time, during the pandemic, uh, I started to kind of kind of cue into some more things a little bit more. And then I saw your uh, zero and one. Is that, was that? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was really, because for me, things have always kind of gone back to, uh, you know, creativity. And what is the, and, and so the way that you presented that, how that film was presented and the camera work, uh, the, how you expressed yourself through the images and things like that at that particular time to really spoke to me a great deal. Uh, as much as the words did, it was the, how the film itself came off. And I was really, um, I liked that a lot because that's when I've directed things or seen, uh, I've seen things, that's been sort of a way that I've seen certain things. Um, being able to capture, being able to, to see life and in little instances over here, like, it was lovely. You did some things where people would be talking and all of a sudden there's an elevator coming down or a shot of this. And it seemed like it was just a, it was like a sidebar and then we're back to the talking, but the sidebar was such a great uh, kind of a, a break in my thought process of what was happening here. Then there was this, in a way, a relief, mm. in a way, just a relief. And um, so that's so that's sort of what brought me in a way to get a hold of you was to just say, "Hey, great work." <laughs> I mean, really great. I really appreciated that, and um, um, and 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 I noticed also from since that time. So it's not; it hasn't been that long. Um, that sort of the way that things are seen now, or there's just something different happening. Mm. Mostly, I don't have a lot to talk about. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, there's a guy that I've been that I've been getting on the phone with. We would get on the phone every morning at seven o'clock in the morning during this pandemic, and we would talk for about an hour. And that was sort of like to just kind of clear clear things out. And I realized in the last couple of months, I've had not a great deal to, to say. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the, uh, you know, and, it, it, and so it, it makes it a little uncomfortable for the, as, as Paul, Paul would call it for the action figure, <laughs> makes it a little uncomfortable for the action figure that's used to doing something in a certain way that's used to behaving in a certain way that's used to this and that, and that all of a sudden you're not doing that anymore. It's just kind of dropping away and you can feel it. I'm going, Oh, wow. Okay. You know, in the midst of, so I feel like I'm in this kind of strange in between phase where I have many, many years of this stuff, that seemingly the story is it's behind, you know, with a lot of meditation and all of that stuff. And all of a sudden I'm here in this particular spot where things are dropping away. And at the same time, we've got all the stuff in America and the pandemic, and there's all of these, you know, these uh, stressors and things that are going on and, you know, being out of your home for five months and stuff. But 
for some reason, that's been easier than I would have ever imagined. Hmm. Yeah. I think seeing the, seeing the riots in the Capitol last Wednesday was about as stressed as I've been for many, many months. Hmm. And that was an interesting feeling to have something that was felt so, you know, so present in the body. So, you know, con constricted. And at the same time, there's a sense of, you know, of it kind of going, it's, this is, it felt really false. <laughs> it felt like a falsity. Mm, yeah. I think, yeah, that's the realness dropping out of things as well. I mean, it's, yeah. It's not it's like, it's not that, um, you see, there's not, it can be an idea that um, there's a place of arrival that somebody will gain, and in that gaining, there will be a peaceful, once removed, blissful, um, you know, experience, and it will not be bothered. It's just that that it's like, in a way, when you're describing that coming off the stage again, I'm going to, I, I really like that simply because because it's a reflection in a kind of a stark way of how there isn't an orchestrator. So it may be that you get really stressed and it may be that that will just uh, disappear a few seconds later. And it might be, it's like, you know, you might have a really strong appearing to have a really strong point of view on Trump or whatever it is. And then somebody else would say something and that would be... <laughs> Annie, it, it's just like opinions don't stick, really. You might, it's right. not like they're your opinions, they're just something that's appearing to be said. Mm. And that sounds once removed, it's just a description of, it sounds like an opinion, it sounds like, feels like stress. And it is, mm. it's full on. This is, it's, it's, to me, it's about this is about being fully alive. It's just mm. that there isn't anything that can be once removed now. The breaks, that were there to stop all the bad feelings and make it all just good feelings, they're gone. So it's off, oh, I'm fucked off now. All right, okay, well, that's just how it is. It just doesn't seem to be the stickiness. It doesn't uh -huh, seem to uh -huh. be. But it, for, as far as I'm concerned, everything is included and nothing is denied. So what are we talking about then? It's really boring. It's, it, there is nothing to say because actually, but then somehow, <laughs> Whilst there's nothing to say, look, this is nothing talking. You know, yeah. this we're talking, we're talking about nothing, and yeah. and and it still seems to be um, a bit of a an interest, an amazing thing to talk about. Talking seems to be an amazing thing, but I mean, I, I for a while I was getting really frustrated about this um, this lockdown idea, just mm -hmm. real frustration. But also at the same time, it's it's the, somehow it's not good frustration or bad frustration. It's, fr it's just frustration. Just mm -hmm. oh, you know, that's all it is. So yeah, yeah. like this, it's the full on, full on, and then nothing's happening. Of course. So. Gosh, you know, it just feels like that. You know the. It's real and unreal all at the same time. There's no dividing line between the real and unreal. It's like just, it's like that. And, 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 and something, the mind or whatever wants to go real, unreal? No. <laughs> same time, <laughs> dude. <laughs> get yeah. it, get yeah. it right. <laughs> same time. So within that, it can go up and, you know, well, if, the, if there was someone in control and mm. doing any of this, it would just be, you know, even doing yeah. the sense of I am a person, I'm unreal, and and I, I just give me real or uh, unreal, don't give me both, because I can't handle that. And, you know, it's just how... Uh, you see, the killer, in a way, the simplicity of it is there's no one. And so within the no one, within that sentence, perhaps uh, that there's nobody doing anything. So there's no, so then doubts are the same as clarity, as frustration, as rage, as sorrow, as love. 
there's a kind of are talking about this is it's maybe less uh, you know it's talking about Trump I'm saying everything has the same kind of chemistry so creativity if I'm right if I'm writing an email to you it's 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 not that I'm going oh this is a creative work of art now I, you know I'm not yeah. going to check all my P's and Q's but it, there is still the that unfolding, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's kind of that just sense of un- it's not even unfolding because you can't describe it as anything. It's just, um, yeah. It's interesting what you said about, you know, uh, uh, about the, it's just what's happening. And, and you said, you know, uh, it, that in a way, then art, like you said, minding my P's and Q's, in a way art, it assumes that art has an editor, that there's an editor that's, that's going, we're going to choose, we're going to make this, this, and this in order to, because there's a vision and that we're going to edit something in order to have this vision, because you're not going to take everything that you shot and put, just go, it's all going in. Yeah. There's no way to do that. There's no way to, you know, do the long shots and then we're going to do, 20 minutes of that, then 20 minutes of a, you know, just the, the head, you know, this shot here, and then... That would be interesting. It would be. <laughs> if you, in a way, to get the conversation, if you got a 20-minute conversation and did it like that, didn't that do anything, and then took it from back over here. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. It's yeah, possible. but you're still, but, but, uh, and, and yet again, is in terms, of, you still have to make some sort of decision on where are we going to do that, how are we going to do that? So it's right. That's the, that's the art. You, you could say you you have to make some decision, or you could say the sure. power decision will yeah. appear to be made, which is such a shitty way of saying it. Because, right. but it is a, a a kind of it's a stupid way to say, it, but yet it is a kind of a a little nod to the fucking the un, the the mystery the unfolding of it you sure know? yeah you know thinking again as as an as an actor you know what they'll say to you what they'll say to you as an actor this is already starting well uh is that uh, is that you have to you know, come up you have to have a choice you got to you're going to make a choice when you're in a scene right so yeah. my choice is you know there's an there's an objective and there's an obstacle and i want I, and i have a, a goal that i'm going to get to so that's that's the kind of the technicality of the actor experience is to have that going on but it, it, i think what happens is you get or maybe you ha- you have an initially I didn't. I, it took me a long time to kind of recognize that even within that, there's a there's a, a shitload of freedom. That it's that that because you never get what you want, and if you get what you want, that then game over. And we're never, you know. And so as actor, as an actor, you have to play at being being a someone who is going to get something and who actually believes that they're going to get it. If they put enough work into it, enough effort or whatever, that they're going to get it. That's essentially the actor's role. And that we're, you know, and those are the characters that we play. So if you're doing the thing that, if we're doing the thing that we're doing now, it's really weird to talk about that. Because you, it, 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 it's weird to talk about because, you know, the, you know, back in the day, the Greeks, they were there for the gods. They were there, they were there for the gods. They were speaking from the gods, you know, that was the thing. Is actors now, it, it feels like you're, sometimes I feel like I'm just bolstering up a, a, a very, very, uh, a storyline, a human storyline that is, that feels very uh, uh, not so truthful. It's, but, it, but as a storyline, there it is. It's, 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 it's that storyline. Does that make any sense? 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, did well, I just go off on like some? No, no. I mean, uh, um, I mean, the, there is something about acting that is quite unique. Um, I, I did it. I did. Um, I did a course for a year. I, mm. Well, I dropped out after seven or eight months. I found it. I did a comedy thing for a while. I tried to give that a go to see what that was like to do oh. comedy. And I did a- acting. Um, and I. When was I thought, this? Do you remember when you did this? Oh, it's a good few years, maybe four or five years ago. But I was in uh-huh. my. So was, I'm 45 now. So I was, mm. you know, it was a. Um, I love film. And I, I just love, love. And I am. Um, and I. I my thinking. What's that? It shows. This is, yeah. Um, yeah. But my feeling was, oh, well, I just can't get over myself, really. I can't, what I remember thinking, I can't let go here. And then yeah. uh, I can't let go into this role. And I can remember the discussion about, you know, you, you know, I remember them saying, well, this is you have to make that choice there. So I, I'm just trying to kind yeah, of understand what you mean choice. by choices that you, um, so you, it was basically, you know, you'd be presented with the scene and do you mean by choice that you're going to take a risk maybe and try something like, you know, way over the top for a moment? And they go, yeah, I see where your choice is. Is that what you mean by that, by choice? Or that you're apparently making a choice? Oh, so the choice, you know, is it can, you know, the great, the, the beauty that I'm seeing is, is that just for the heck of it, I'm going to make a choice that I want you to, I, I want you to love me. Yeah. I want you to love me and I'm going to do whatever I can to get you to love me. So that's a, so, and I'm going to really put, and it's so funny because it's really, it, 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 the talk is, it's, it feels like you have some sort of free will and self will that I'm going, you know, so you're going to put your, all of your energy into getting that from someone and no matter what. So no matter what you say, I'm going to keep, I'm going to, my choice is to get you to love me. And, uh, uh, and so people can take that and then they can, they can kind of up the stakes on that choice, which is, uh, uh, or, they can, or they can say, and if you don't love me, I'm going to do this. So if I see that you don't love me, I'm going to do this. Now you've got dialogue that you're going to speak, but you can make whatever choice you're going to make and the dialogue will somehow bend itself around into those choices. And, and a director could say, cut, let's have another choice. So that's what you hope for, is that it's just like, take one, take two. So on film, you're doing that. In theater, it's different because you're able to rehearse and, and go, through a, go through a number of different choices for a moment or for a scene or whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, and then you see where, and that's the fun of it to me. It's almost like the, the final performance isn't, the final product isn't uh, the greatest, you know, that's, I like rehearsals and I like shooting something, but the seeing the th- the end result, just to see what, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Mm. Doing a theater performance, that's a whole other thing. It's getting in front of people. I, I get a little more, uh, I don't know how fond I am of being in front of crowds anymore. I yeah. think I used to like it a lot more years ago. Yeah, the build-up for me was always the... When they jumped onto the stage, that was fine, but having to um, think about it and deal with the anxiety, the anxiety could have de- began three or four weeks beforehand. Mm. Um, just this feeling in my stomach going, oh, God, oh, God. And I used to do all sorts of things, but um, I, I wanted to go back to that, uh, the idea of, um, you see, in a way, all the theory about non-duality is kind mm-hmm. of utterly irrelevant. It appears like, you know, it's good to understand or there's clarity, but it's, there's, there's, there's not someone who recognizes that there's, you know, uh, no free will and choice or whatever mm, it is. Mm, it's, it's, it's just that anything and everything is something you could say that is appearing to, be ha- to happen, but it's not owned. It's not owned by anyone. So in a way, there is that total freedom. Mm-hmm. And 
now if you're you know there's the total freedom and anything and everything that can be said because it includes everything it also includes jesus as a bit I blabbered on a little bit there you know i went on too much that's also something that's maybe some to a certain extent is more built into the the character the ruminating but you, nothing kind of sticks i think when if when there's nothing that and then you still even this now makes it's making something out of nothing again and that's what words will do no matter what but you could say that everything is allowed be as it is but it's not that there's anybody allowing it it just is what it is do you know mm -hmm. what I mean so there isn't yeah. even though the recognition it's absolutely pointless to recognize that there's no free will and choice mm -hmm. because it's just another idea but that again that's a happening in total emptiness it's a total free fall appearing to be a thought appearing to be something held belief or whatever you want to describe it or you can just say it's, it's fucking nothing you know it's <laughs> it's just what it is so so then in that you know if we're talking about creativity and art because i remember asking michael riley about the first time i did the podcast with him did he notice the difference be between acting when you know when it all dropped away let's just say this is because i i need there to be again <laughs> i need in my mind i thought well there must be now gain there because i was always i'm right. always looking for angles you know i'm just open yeah you know just uh so i, I wanted to know and i i can't it would be interesting to if i ever look back on it but i, I can't remember him saying really I think it was just the, the stickiness of was that good enough or, you know, in other words, say you do a performance and then the next day they'd be eating cornflakes and drinking coffee. Yeah, and maybe yeah. there might be thoughts about it, but that would be all of everything. It wouldn't be back trying to negotiate or figure out, oh God, oh. but there might be thoughts of, well, okay, I might do this the next time. It's just, there isn't a gain for mm -hmm. anyone. Mm hmm Yeah. Boy. I went down this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it occurs to me, two things occur to me. Um, um, yeah, and I'll just uh, do, again, another little Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption moment. And then uh, is that the first image of uh, Joe and I coming on stage as we're brought into the prison and immediately they remove all of our clothes. So we're naked on stage. So that's, that was, and I remember um, then going, well, this is it, isn't it? Before that, almost every show, it was like, now, you just are, now you're just stepping into the complete unknown. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna get on stage and take off your clothes, then there you go. And I realize that that's how it is almost with every moment yeah. in life. And in, in you know, I, I, I did a show called, um, I did The Flash and I played a mega villain called Icicle. So I had I <laughs> created a thing. And so I, and I remember the same thing. The, the, when the first time that I was going to be on camera wasn't just a, Hi, I'm Icicle. Nice to see you. Here's a freeze gun. It wasn't that. It was like, boom. You know, it was a huge thing with a lot of people around and a lot of special effects. And I felt the same thing of like, okay, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? Yeah, because the camera's going to start rolling and they're going to say action and you're out there. So, but in life, action was called a long time ago <laughs> and and the curtain went up a long time ago and 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 it's constantly going up and it's constantly this the action figure is constantly just stepping stepping into shit mm. stepping into shit or stepping into delight or stepping it's just constantly and it's new every single time yeah I and, think that's the, the newness, yeah. What you described like you, is the newness, yeah. Yeah, and what you said about that it doesn't matter if there's free will or not, and that's what 
uh, you know, my friend Paul had said, he said, you believe in free will, act as if there's free will. See, so oh well. Good luck with that, yeah. You know, having the knowledge that it doesn't mean anything, yeah. It's he's like somebody he's knowing. Keep, he's basically saying, live your life. Yeah. Live your life. And, and, and to, to, to get into a, a, a thing about that is... And when you and you can't even live your life because you're being lived in a way. Yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah. it's it's, un, it's it's unfortunate that there's nothing that can be said because yeah. and yet here we are, like we're having a go. <laughs> but, but, the great, but the beauty is, is that I I, I love I love for to say that, and then you say you, you can't live your life. It all of a sudden, I feel that carpet being taken out. Yeah. Right, the carpet is just continues because you. It's like you said. There's nothing that feels like can be said that's going to set anything in stone mm. at all. It can't be known. Thank. I mean, if it could be known, if it was a thing that could be known, mm. well, welcome to hell. Welcome to hell. And you can uh, <laughs> go for it. Enjoy that. But welcome to hell. If that's truly felt then you really are entering into hell. If this could be tamed, but contained, bound by words, could know itself. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with that for uh, infinity. Uh, but that seems like also when you say that, the minute that you say that, I thought of, well, that's politics. To it's, know it. Well, yeah, words and beliefs, and these are the things we stand by. You know, it's like no one can afford to step off of that position because if they, you know, it's that to me is yeah, that's exactly that's right. hell. Do you that's see, hell. and there isn't an authority figure. Yeah. There isn't somebody who knows anything. I mean, there's a, a huge amount of pretense about every tiny thing of expertise and whatever it may be. But this, no, no, this this is the free. <laughs> this is free. This is all already. <laughs> but, and, and it's and it's not a thing that can be known, so you can't have it there. So you can start talking. I mean, I can get that sense straight away. You know, really, when you hear it now, you because the, the the wonder and the newness is that it can't be had or known or felt or touched or uh, anyone's. Uh, you know, because if it could be. Well, what would it be then? It should be a thing that could be had. It'd just be another iPhone. It'd just be another mm -hmm. uh, wisdom. Who wants wisdom? What's wisdom? It's another bound idea that there is such a thing as wise and a wise person. It's all a dream. I mean, it, it is. And in a way, would you, when you're talking about the stage being the edgy and then what life like, this, the, un the unpredictability of how you're going to be, what mood are you going to be in? I mean, there's this idea, oh, we should be all balanced and, oh, God, I'm very up and down or I'm very grumpy or whatever. You know, it's all this idea of a fixed person that should be a certain way in life, still trying to contain the uncontainable. And this mm. is always uncontainable. And yet nobody knows that even all these words give the impression that we're describing something alternative. And maybe it is alternative, but it's unbelievably ordinary. It's just, it's not, and ordinary is another word than you hear and you kind of go, oh, I want some ordinary. And still it's, it's the wanting of something ordinary. It's, it's just, it's just this, somehow the edginess can be getting up in the morning, going downstairs, getting into the shower, the, but it's because we kind of can, the brain will go, yeah, well, I know that, I've done that, so I don't need to do, I, I know that. You know, whereas, you know, when it goes, say, to a brand new, not it, but when you go to a brand new place, a bit edgy, I need to know where I am. I mean, I need to know where I am in the never lasting, in the, this is, we, we like somebody said to me once, it's like, you know, get a, get a, get a fork and stick it into one part of London and show me London, show me London under the ground. You know, where does it begin and end? Where does anything begin and end? Where do we begin and end? It's all, it's all a, a dream because we like to live in the safety of, of, uh, geez, I'm going on, but you know, the safety of, yeah. uh, of, of things. And it, it's, it's absolutely innocent and ferociously edgy. And yet it's nothing. And yet it's, and yet it's nothing.
Yeah. But it's not it's not a thing that is nothing. You know, when we I remember hearing nothing going on. Nothing is this blank grey thing. <laughs> it's, it's it's also no thing in uh, indivisible uh, undivisible indivisible nothingness. It's it's just that there isn't a thing. And yet here we are, like look, talking seemingly. Yeah. Apparently talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like. Uh, I hate the word. I hate the word. Apparently, sorry. Oh, you do? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, I mean, it's just I've heard it, and it seems <laughs> now I'm using it. I kind of I hear it, and I go, ah. you know. But it, I mean, it's it's it, again. It's all it is. Is a, you see, nothing is. It can be felt really. You see, things can be said with appearing like this conviction of, yeah, no, this is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. the way it is and you go all right okay so what is the way what anything is so yeah. it's so tight constrained yeah. whereas this is loose and free yeah 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 i mean even even like you say or like is it even the thought of apparently you know wish there was another even that's it yeah even oh, that's yeah. it yeah because i go oh well i'm gonna you know seemingly apparently seemingly go back and you know but see but seemingly all pointing to the same thing which is no thing yeah and everything <laughs> to, 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 to wrap that up <laughs> yeah yeah Try, it's 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 almost when i was writing I'm, it's like trying to catch catching or um it's trying to hold on to holding. It's trying to uh, talk and grab, grabbing. Yeah. You know, it's, it, and you know that's. I suppose I hate the word pointers because again, it suggests like there's something to point to. But it, I can understand why somebody might have written words like that. But it, you know, if somebody, you know, this Zen pointing to the yeah, moon, yeah, yeah, lark, yeah, yeah, lark. Yeah. and you, 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 you want to kind of go well, it's. It's the seeing of the moon, it's the finger, it's the hand, it's the looking for it, but it's also the seeking of it, it's everything. So, mm -hmm. and, but I, I think they're trying to kind of just go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great performance, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well done. It's yeah. great. No, we're being serious again, are we? This is yeah, real. We're yeah. Oh, we're having a serious conversation about non-duality then. Okay. Is that what's, is that what's, yeah, is that real for you? Because I really don't know. I don't know what's happening. But it's, a, you know, in a, a weird way, it's like, um, uh, again, I go back to the, the Edinburgh Festival is that they kept the, they kept the performances to, uh, they had to be a certain amount of time because people had tickets for other things and then they went from there to there. So in a way they were saying, thank you, let's get you off the stage. I've got another show to go to and I'm gonna go over here. And sometimes I, uh, there's that that seeking mind is doing the same thing going okay heard that video on to the next one on to the next one oh god yeah. i'm sick and tired of all of these videos i'm not going to listen to anything i'm just going to till suddenly <laughs> and that's another thing and that's another yeah. thing yeah it, it is just it's in the end is the breathless seeking it's a it's uh, uh, like the I used to always skip. I wanted to hear about liberation and the juicy. I wanted to, uh, the first part where you just say, it was, here we are, this is, this. Is, it's uh, still this, it's always this, but let's go on now and tell a whole story about liberation and freedom. And that's what I loved. I love the story of, you know, someone who's seeking and that they, they can get liberated. The first part mm -hmm. still, but it's still just this though. Which is includes that, um. isn't it? That's interesting. You know, I, my uh, my my daughter got me a, a, a she got me a book for Christmas, and um, she said, "Dad, what do you want for Christmas?" I didn't know what I wanted, and I went, "Well, I don't know. I just don't know." She goes, "You gotta." So I'm I was thinking about going. What the heck, I don't. There's nothing I really want. I went, okay. Um, how about a book about this one Zen teacher? Okay. And what I realized that I've, what I realized what I've done is 
is like you said, you're interested in the liberation. <laughs> what I realized I did is I go, man, I want to know what he did before that. <laughs> I want to know what his life was like leading up before that. Because yeah, give, uh, give me the juice. Just yeah, give me the, yeah, just give, me, give me a path. Give yeah, me just something give me that what I can was, relate yeah, to. Yeah, what were the hardships? What were the, you know, yeah. as if hardship somehow leads to this thing, you know, and that, that, that somehow within that hardship, that's not already the thing, right? That somehow there this is, leads to that. There is a loveliness to this story making machines and the meaning making yeah. machines. I mean, we are the dreamers of dreams and the, I mean, we will find a story to be told even in apparently nothing happening. There's still a, a story that, okay, this is nothing happening then. I want to know what nothing happening is, uh, you know, and there's still a, still in the story. You see, the, the problem in a way is that, you see, everything is a story. So mm -hmm. non-duality is a story. Oh, no, 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 no. Non-duality is the one real story now. Mm -hmm. That's the real one. That's the one I'm listening to. So don't say non-duality is a story. Well, non-duality is a story. Liberation is a story. I mean, the problem, in a way, there's no safe. The, the boat is out at sea and there's no anchors. There's no safety, really. You can the mind and go and then... Really, I mean, that's the edginess in a way that there is no safety. There's no safe place mm. here. There's nowhere to hide in the sense you can't escape yourself. And yet escaping yourself is, is, is what is like. So trying to escape yourself, you know what I mean? So then you, you hear stories of, I mean, I'm, the amount of times I, I would have said over the years, God, just... Give me a little something, guy. Just give me something, you know. <laughs> oh, go look. But I, I didn't. I never liked the idea then as well that you know this, you know, of wisdom or authority or mm -hmm. uh, or oh, I so if if I am to get this, does that mean that I'm an authority? Does that mean you're an authority on this? So then it's a thing. So that didn't sit ever really. But still, I mean, I always believed, still believed that there's something to yeah. get. Yeah, 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 that there's something to get. Yeah, I, I think, you know. Or more so that was something, sorry, more so that was something that was, uh, uh, the seeking energy still was happening of, even if it was, even if it was clear that there was nothing, I still, there was, there was, you could call it hope that, well, I want to be a nobody who has got, I want to be somebody who's got the nobodiness or, you know, I want to be there and, and feel like what it is to be, not be a self. And the problem, the impossibility is that there is no self. That's the impossibility. So, so there is no one doing the seeking and then no one finds. There's no before and after. That's your gateless gate in a way. There's no, it's just... <laughs> yeah 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 I, uh, you know I, I think that I said earlier about that I, I, I didn't feel like I was a seeker um, but but I realized that to me this how the seeking how the seeking show, showed up was in um, my ears were always attuned to hearing listening for stories my ears are always attuned to uh, oh, I, I'd like to play a character like that. Oh, uh, this person's telling me this story. They don't even see that their life story is like an interesting thing for the film, for film or for stage. I do, because I know that that's, that's something that's really, it's dramatic or it's comedic or it's something like, so there was this, this seeker in me was, is all wrapped up with, uh, uh, with creating with creating. And so to hear this message um, that had, no one was talking about, <laughs> mm. you know, acting or movies or anything like that. It was a message that there was nothing, absolutely nothing to gain from it. That to me was a relief and a horror show at the same time. Mm. Um, because
because there was nothing for me to grasp on to 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 write about it, to act it, anything like that. So that was like now that now that's pushed off to the side, and that was that's been my entire life. And now there's nothing to gain from any of this. And um, it's, a, it's a relief. And like I said, it's, it's a, for the artist, for whatever the artist, whatever I call the artist, it's, it's of no use whatsoever. Well, um, um, no, well, no, it is absolutely pointless. Yeah. Um, but um, in a way, Bad though... News. <laughs> uh, well you see that and again that's more i suppose it is this it's kind of still this it's a it's an energy of trying to um must be something even in nothing even in my own absence there the creativity will just be unbounded i, yeah. I mean in the in the same way i'd say to you good luck with not being creative good luck with trying not to be creative see how that works Good luck with trying to be creative. Mm -hmm. it's the same. Good luck with not being creative. We're doing anything creative again forever. Yeah. But um, and see, does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, I'd be yeah. very. But uh, I had one thought when you said something there about the actor and seeking roles. I wonder, is there anything in the? Um, this is just a, a bullshit like. But I wonder, is there anything in the idea of already there being that sense of. There isn't a fixed anything. And whereas the, you know, somehow this person looks out to the world and goes, well, everybody is, I don't know, this is bullshit, but let's just go with yeah. it for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look out into the world and everybody seems to have defined roles and, and particularly on film, it's actors have a clear role and you can define who they are. They're good looking, charismatic, evil, vicious, whatever it is about them. And... Mm. And in a way, when there there is a kind of a well, I'd like to be what this. I'd like to be that one, because mm -hmm. but I'm not anyone really. You know, in truth, really, you, that's there's this. Uh, but there's the feeling of maybe oh, I'd like to be that one, and then that's maybe that character dies. And in a, a movie, you could tell me this better when you have to park a character, and then apparently you're back to this real character. And then you then you move on to maybe another one, and then they say, "Well, you keep some of your old character and you bring that into this new character." But it's all this kind of, is this? I don't know this being somebody. It's like when you're a teenager, you want to have an identity of, whether it's through music, you you need everybody else seems like they're somebody, mm -hmm. and you know, does that you know? Well, uh, there is the role, but at least I am an actor or I'm going to be a businessman. I, I can be that. That's what I am. At least in this total free fall, I am one thing. I'm just curious about that. You know, I, I am that now, at least. Or And if all that's fair, can you say, well, I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker. That's what I am. Mm. And that's, that's, that's enough to survive with that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's more of a curiousness about... Yeah, one. I think... Uh... I think that um, there's a, a bit of, I mean, for, uh, just for, you know, I used, to, when I went to uh, movies uh, early on, and when I was in that thing of, that phase of, oh, I, I want to be an actor, there were people that I looked at and I went, that's the kind of acting I want to do. I want to do something that feels so, alive and re so there was a sense of like whatever was emanating from that actor not necessarily that role but it was coming through everything they were doing that's how I wanted to um, that's what I wanted to do I wanted to live boldly and be able to do those kinds of roles and really and, and a lot of it for me was because I was so I was unhappy in my life. I was unhappy being just Kyle Secor or whatever. I wanted to do, I wanted to, you know, so I, I, so that's how I approached, that's how that affected, you know, that my storyline growing up as an actor. Um, to look back and say, 
because I did this and this and this and this role, I learned this and this and this, and that made me a better person or anything that I learned anything from it at all. Um, I think the intangibles, it's like, uh, you know, they talk about football players or basketball players that do all the intangible stuff on the court that you never see, but, and don't show up in the statistics, but are just there. That, that's the stuff that I think you take away is there's not, it, 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 it put me in contact. The, the more people that I was in contact with for, for the way that this, this character, Kyle, lived, it was really good for me to be in contact with a diverse set of people because of how I grew up. I grew up in a very small town and I didn't have a lot of, you know, so it, it, it got me to see the world differently and it got me to be out in the world differently. Um, the, the part where I was involved in things where there was a certain amount of um, uh, notoriety involved where people would approach you and they would know your name and you didn't know their name and they would say, hey, can I get this, that or the other from you, whatever. That to me was that was a part of the whole thing. That was no thing appearing as everything. But to me, that was not apparently what I got involved in this thing for. Apparently I didn't get involved with it to become famous or, or, to, or to be recognized on the street or whatever you know, that is. So when that happened, it, it was such a surprise that it, I, it, it kind of, I folded in on myself. Mm -hmm. That could be said. I folded in on, on myself and, you know, and, and, and what happened is that I wouldn't want to go out. I wouldn't want to go out and be around people. So in, in essence, this, the thing that was giving me this freedom then ended up kind of uh, doing this, uh, the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. So that happened for a while. Then finally, I was able to just be live fairly freely and uh, and also uh, enjoy people's performances and not imagine that I wanted to be like that actor, or this actor, or that actor. It was just um, it was being able to just kind of go and see something and and see it for that experience without saying why or why didn't I get that role or why didn't you know? It was just it, it, finally finally it feels like I came to a neutral place. Uh, about that, about that, about seeing seeing other performances, or seeing other actors. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you: Do you do you think you know when you were saying you didn't want to go outside, mm. meet people? Um, do you think it was uh, this is rubbish? Like, but do you, do you think that there was a feeling of that they thought you were someone and? you weren't yes yes exactly that's exactly it yeah. that's exactly it they yeah. thought i was someone and i knew i wasn't yeah As, and it's, and it is that in pressure that's then so to good. be to be to be that then but oh, that's who i am now when i'm not not that like okay yeah. I'm not, and i'm not that I, I, honestly i don't really know what i am am i the sound of my own voice then okay that's what you can say that i am if you want, if you want to, if you want to say that, or um, I'm a baseball cap with glasses, and that's what you can say I am. If that's if that's where you really want to go with, or I'm this sort of person, or Isn't it's it interesting. interesting. Yeah. It's interesting when you say that. It feels like it, it felt like it was far more dramatic, but really, it's not that at all. That's just the way it is, because we look, we are in these action figures, which are there are these roles that are applied to us as, you know, father, husband, actor, friend, whatever that is. And it's, it's all of that. And it's none of that. Yeah. And how beautiful that is. Cause that's mm. full on. Oh yeah. That's full on.
All right, dude. Great to talk. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. We'll we'll keep in touch. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. take it easy. Right. See you. Bye. Bye. Come on, man.